Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up, and to the episode where we look at some interesting games. Now, this week we were going to have a little chat about some lovely limited editions and collector's editions from Strictly Limited Games that they sent over to us, but we did run out of time, we'll be showing those in the next episode. They've currently got a 20% off sale that runs from, well it ran from the 24th of November all the way up to the 12th of December. We'll pop links and information to that in the description. Go and check it out if you're interested in buying those physicals. Absolutely, a thank you to them for sending those bits over. As Mark said, we will talk about those next time, some cracking titles for sure. But which games have we been playing? Well, let's find out. Okay, the first one I want to talk about then uh, is a game that came out this year, start of the year it was though, and that's Fire Emblem Engage. Now this came out and I was very interested in in playing it, I'm a fan of the series, but it's just, you know, these days it's a bit of a time sink and I never got round to it, but I was a bit unwell last week and was kicking my heels a little bit <laughs> as you do, you know, and decided to, to start it and wow, what what a great game this yeah? is. Yeah, oh, fantastic game, so, such fun. Like it, I know that Free Houses came out a couple of years ago and, and that's the one now that people hold up and mm. proclaim to be the, the best or their favorite and that's fair enough, but for me, this one strikes a better balance between what came before and some of the new bits introduced. Oh, nice. You know, Free Houses kind of um, took some bits out that I, I quite enjoyed and, and went down a slightly different path. And I think that's important for the series. This is a series that has kind of uh, gone from being very obscure, almost being canceled, mm. to, to finding ways to keep growing. And that's great for, for any uh, franchise to continue to get new, uh, new fans. But this one just strikes a chord with me, you know? Yeah, what's well, so what kind of like because it's uh, tactical, isn't it? It is tactical yeah. gameplay. Yeah, it is. So it's a tactical RPG, as as it always has been, as this series always has been. You play as a, a person known as the Divine Dragon. So you, uh -huh. the the series start or the uh, the game, beg your pardon, starts with a, a war, and you defeat the you know the, the uh, bid bad and uh, cast them away, and then you go into a sleep for a thousand years, and you're woken up by the the feeling or the presence that this evil is returning, you know? Yeah. Wake up with no memories, etc., etc. And then you kind of put your team together as you go through the game. Okay. So th that's always that's one of the things I've always liked about Fire Emblem is the way that your team is formed. So you start with a, a few different uh, members and they all have their own classes, you know? But then you'll meet people along the way. Sometimes they'll just join your team, but sometimes you'll have to talk to them in battle. Right. For them to join you. And if you don't talk to them whilst, you know, by battle's end, that's it, they're gone. And the other main gameplay mechanic of this one is the fact that you can call back kind of legacy characters from previous games via your ring, that you have like a, an emblem ring they're called, and you can assign these to characters and then they can call that character to join them in battle with the process calling engaging, hence the title, and they almost merge with that character to become a more powerful entity. Do they still have the thing where people can die permanently? Yeah, they've changed that um, slightly, but again, I think it's a positive change. So you have your two um, different ways you can play. You can play classic, which is what I play, where people can die and they're out yeah. permanently, or you can play in a way that they'll return for the, the next battle. But within the classic mode, it has something called a time crystal, where you can rewind a few turns if you want. So if ah, you do lose good. someone, it's not as punishing as it was before. Yeah. I think that's a really good uh, addition, actually. It's one of those where you first see it and you're like, oh, do I like that? And then within a couple of missions of losing someone, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can take it, you know. But again, you don't have to use it if you don't want. And I guess it doesn't guarantee you'll be able to keep them alive. It just gives you a chance, does it? Absolutely. There's been times where I've re rewound a couple of times. They've still died or I've yeah. rewound a bit further and thought, okay, what did I do wrong? <laughs> it's still gone wrong and I've ended up having to retry the mission. So it's not yeah. uh, fail safe, you know, that you can still lose. So, um, But I like its inclusion. Yeah. It's a lovely looking game as well. It's really gone for a a kind of anime style there's a lot of uh, cut scenes really mm. really high polished game you know i mean you like tactical rpgs yeah, don't you? i love them yeah. this is for my opinion no it's not it's not a um a genre that i dabble in a lot yeah but it's got a great balance of gameplay and story okay more so than i think other games have yeah triangle strategy being for one where i just felt there was too much story mm. for my personal tastes i think this gets the balance right the battles themselves are I don't, they're not too easy. I mean, I'm on chapter 10 and there's 26 chapters, so I'm right. sure it will ramp up. <laughs> and you can do side quests, and I have done all the side quests, which means my level is perhaps a bit higher than it would otherwise have been, you know. Mm. But you can you can get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're not careful, you can get absolutely mullered. You know, I, I've played this series for a long time. 
but you can you can certainly find yourself in trouble if you if you don't think about your moves. You know, I highly recommend this one. I found it on sale, the physical uh, version, in a local toy shop for twenty pound. Bargain. It's one of the bargains of of the year. Smith's Toy Superstore. Smith's Toy Superstore. Give him a shout out. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, great price, great game. Lovely. All right, nice. Yeah, I saw you pop up playing that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right, my first one then goes from something that looks amazing with lovely anime style to something that looks very dated because it's old. Right. And that is Gothic 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. You played we, the, uh, the first I one. I played the first one, week, yeah, yeah, and that was in the uh, one of these videos as yeah. well. Uh, Gothic 2's just come out. Obviously, the first game kind of had limited scope in terms of its world building. You had these, like, um, almost like these two... Uh, factions that were based within like outposts almost um, this one feels more fleshed out in terms of the world more open world mm -hmm. you start out with a wizard <laughs> and he has uh, he saved you basically I, obviously there'll be minor spoilers I have to say it's minor minor but he saved you from something at the end of the last game okay so it directly continues uh, from the last game yep uh, if you've played the original or if you've played any traditional RPG, you'll kind of know what you're getting into. What I do like about these and what I do still, still think kind of holds up well in comparison to more modern games is that almost everyone's narrated. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like decent voice actors as well. It's, yeah. It's almost at odds with the visuals. Right. The visuals are so janky. <laughs> like, yeah, none of that, like, no mouth movement, just yeah. those kind of like... The heads aren't even round, do you remember? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They look like some kind of like pineapples. Like a carved pumpkin or something yeah, exactly, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like the weird square arms. But <laughs> there's some like nostalgia to it as well. I kind of like it. I'm like, yeah. And the whole things are obviously running 60 frames per second, which is always nice to see. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like super, super smooth. Um, although I did have a few issues. I did have one crash. I think. It, no, it's not my fault if a game crashes. No, I, no, I kept switching backwards and forwards between the modes to get footage. Oh, to right. see the like performance. They've got a performance in a um, quality mode. Right. But switching backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and then it crashed. That's not my fault, is it? That's the game's fault. Yeah, I mean, you, you should be able to do what you want in a yeah. game within reason and it work. To Exa be honest. Yeah, exactly. So, so I would say just keep your eye out because if the fact that I've managed to make it crash and that was like in the first hour of the game, right, is something to kind of keep your eye on. But yeah, if you like things like Skyrim and stuff. People can very often just see the visuals and go, no, like, my daughter walked in again and was like, no, that's rubbish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what do you mean it's rubbish? It's quality. She was like, no, nah, look at it. I was like, no, 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 get out. <laughs> I think there's, I mean, when did that come out? I'm, I'm assuming early 2000s. Yeah, it's got to be a Around about that time. A long time ago. I never played that one. No, one. I mean, that's the era where games had transitioned from 2D to 3D yeah. properly, isn't it? You mm -hmm. know, like, 3D, the 3D era was, was here. And um, it was very much in its infancy, and it shows these days, doesn't it? it? it do you know what? I find the thing that really shows the most, because obviously the, the core gameplay, and obviously the visuals, that goes without saying, yeah. is the controls. Because they had yes. that era of trying to get away from tank controls. Yep. So yeah. this is like almost like a hybrid of tank controls. You still turn with like the left stick, but then you can use the right to do some, and it just feels weird. Right. It, it just feels a bit odd. Yeah. It's funny what you say about the uh, narration mm. not feeling dated. Because I suppose if you get good voice actors, it's yeah. going to hold up for yeah. forever, isn't it? Yeah. You watch a film from the 30s, yeah. and they have that kind of gravitas to their voice. It doesn't, you know, you, you keep it, don't you? You really do. Do you know what I was watching last night? Go on. Blade Runner. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. I sat down for half an hour. The first half an hour of Blade Runner, just like my little tribute to Rutger Hauer. Yeah. It's so good. Well, I mean, that's. I mean, you, you listen to, um, what's his, is it Roy? Roy yeah, Patty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You listen to his monologue at the end. It doesn't matter how many years pass. Yeah. It's stellar, isn't it? You know, amazing. But you know what? This, I, I, we should, really should have a film channel. But it, it does hold up visually as well, doesn't it? That, yeah, that, it's just incredible to look at. It does, it does. And um, it's funny, isn't it? Because a lot of films based on the future yeah. don't. But I think that one, in some respects, it grounded itself in a bit more reality by mm. having that, that gritty feel to it, where you could see the the remnants of the, the world before technology took over yeah and in others i suppose with flying cars and whatnot you can yeah. still get you know but even they feel grounded to, to a it's degree the little realistic they? touches isn't it like the umbrellas with the neon shafts yeah you know like yeah, that's quality yeah. sorry little uh, segue there yeah but, uh, <laughs> it's a very Gothic good film. 2 is a is a is a good game so far from what i've played with a couple of little niggles and bugs and things uh, yeah check it out nice my uh, my next one is one that i do want to talk about the game obviously but it's more about the interesting part for me is what could come from it right okay so the game itself is available on the uh, switch online app mm -hmm. the Game Boy app and it's called quest for Camelot okay so this is 
a movie tying game based on a film that came out in 1998. Now, I'm not going to pretend I've seen it or even knew about it because I didn't and haven't. And um, it's like an animated film from Warner Brothers, you know, very Disney esque or, or yeah. Pixar, where, you know, that sort of thing. It had uh, Pierce Brosnan, I think, did one of the voices, Gary Oldman as well. Celine Dion did singing for the, uh, you know, for the soundtrack, or she she was the voice of the singing characters, you know. And um, it's a, a an action RPG where you play as the main character in the film, whose father is killed. He's one of um, King Arthur's knights. Okay. And he's killed at the start of the film uh, by you know a rogue knight who wants to take over. He wants to become king. He, he dies defending the king and then his daughter grows up 10, 15 years later, whatever, wants to be a knight of the realm, you know? So you play as the, the girl and um, it's a classic kind of top-down adventure, you know, think yeah. Zelda, that sort of thing. <laughs> it's very flawed. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's very flawed. It's, yeah, I mean, it's... So you walk about, you start the game that you have to collect, you go to a blacksmith for a weapon, right? Of course, and, yeah. And he says... Uh, I'm not helping you till you help me find my chickens. So you've got to go and find chickens and you've got to walk into these caves and these caves warp you to another cave and you need to solve the puzzle and find the chickens, right? So you do that, you give him his chickens back. Yeah, mate, have your chickens. And uh, <laughs> he says, right, you know, thanks for that. Here's a sword. You need to go and talk to me brother in town because he'll show you how to fight. So, so off you go, you traipse off to find his brother and... Uh, his brother says to you, like, this is weird, right? This, this isn't just me, yeah? He says, right, I'm going to teach you how to fight, but first you need to do something for me. Of course I do. Of course. Go and fight all the bandits in the forest. But before you've taught me how to fight, <laughs> can you not just give me a few pointers before I go out and get murdered <laughs> by, the, you know, the bloodthirsty <laughs> swines in the forest? No? All right. All right. Off I go then. So out you go, swing your little sword, woo, 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 you know, killing them all. And then you go back again. He says, lovely. Now that you've killed everyone, I'll show you how to fight. <laughs> Brilliant, cheers mate. <laughs> and he shows you, a, you know, like the classic Zelda, hold down A and then your sword oh, yeah. swings round. That would have killed a load of bandits, that would have. It would have helped with the bandits, that's for sure mate. Chopped a few trees down as well probably. <laughs> but um, it's really janky, like you hold it down and then you let go and then nothing happens. And then eventually she does it and by then you've been mullered, you know. Oh, <laughs> and then you go into the castle, I'm just relaying the story here, but you go into the castle. And like you walk in, so you go into, into the main man's car, you know, the big, the main, the big, the big dog. Bat, yeah, yeah. Into his castle. Soup. Right, you, <laughs> not him, no. He's uh, he's ordering food off just to eat at the minute, isn't he? And uh, you walk through the door, and one of his servants is standing there. So you've, you've snuck in nice and, you know, stealthily here. And he's standing right there, and he goes, oh, so you uh, you want to kill the boss, do you? <laughs> I was thinking about it. You're going to need a shield, mate. All right. I just saw a man walking in with a dog, and he had one. I'm not even joking. Like, this is how bad the dialogue is. I hope the film was better. <laughs> So you've got to now find a man about a dog. Literally got to find a man about... So <laughs> now you go and you find this geezer and he says, oh yeah, I found a shield earlier, but I'm annoyed because my dog's run off. With it on his back, clearly. So you've got to find the dog. But then the ge the man runs off as well. What? So it's not like you can go back to where he was with the dog. Now you've got to find him again and his poxy dog. I give up at this point. I'm going to be honest with <laughs> you. I've got to be honest. I want to play it. Yeah, give it a go. This is Why one not? of those where I think me and loads of people listening are like, I really I need, need to, to play this game. This. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason I'm, I'm bringing it up is because <laughs> as much as I like movie games and there you go again, even for a film I didn't even see, I wanted to play the movie game, but it opens up the opportunity for mm. the online service to have licensed games on it, surely. I mean, why would they have yeah. that one otherwise? You know, I know you had Goldeneye on there, of course. Yeah. But I, I think maybe GoldenEye is a bit of a, a lure into itself in some ways, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of other licensed games following it. This one I don't think is. This is so random yeah. that a movie licensed game from nearly 30 years ago, 25 years ago, is on there. It excites me for the fact we could get others. You're excited for more trash. No. <laughs> for every, you know, absolute donkey turd of one, yeah, yeah. you could get... You know, I um, oh, we don't need Turtles in Time, it's on a collection, but you know what I mean? You could yeah. get a Batman Returns for the Super Nintendo, what a game yeah. that was. You know, you could get one of those games, possibly, on the on that service. Okay, his eyes have lit up. I do like that fault. Yeah, right? I do like the that The excitement. Because <laughs> these games are lost to time otherwise. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Aren't they? You know, it's once true. the license expires, no one owns them anymore, technically, or someone does, but not the person that made it, yeah. and they just never get seen again. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I did a, I have a little like a indie section at the end of my sales video, where I just put a developer or publisher that's 
that's doing something good. Yeah. And I had um, Night Dive Studios right. this Sunday. Yeah. Just because they've done so much to bring games back. Like the Blade Runner point and click. Yeah. That was like my dream. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's decent. I actually bought that again yesterday on a different console. How oh, did you? That's weird, isn't it? When you start doing that, you know you've got problems. Yeah, I've done that a lot of times. Have you? I'm resisting the urge not to buy Disco Elysium for a fourth time. And I'm losing that urge. Yeah, no, just, just lose just, yourself just to it. Just do it, it, isn't just it? Do it. Make it happen. Yeah. All right, lovely. Nice one. Okay, I'm going to put in one that's a bit a bit iffy, a bit whiffy. Um, and that is, and I need to actually look up the how to say the full name because it's ludicrous. That is Naruto X Baruto. Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections, which came out on the Switch about a week ago, mm. but there weren't early copies, so we obviously haven't had a chance to to get a review out. The the, the copies came basically launch day. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, I have to say, I really like the old the other games. That some of them had like a free roam element that you could go around the towns and stuff like that. And obviously, they did their best to try and recap the story by having you go through different locations, and then you could kind of relive story elements. They've gone. <laughs> A different route this time with the storyline. I don't like it. Right. You know, like minor spoiler stories for the. First, what did I just say? Spoiler stories. Spoiler stories. Wow. <laughs> Those as well. But minor <laughs> spoilers are about to happen for the first like one minute of the game. Okay. You boot up the story mode and it's like it's a new adventure. You're like, great, amazing, good stuff. Then he puts on a VR headset. Oh, right. And he's okay. like, right, I can go and experience life as. Da -da -da. So it's like in VR. I was like, nah. No, 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 no. For that reason. So for someone that's never <laughs> played a Naruto game or seen a Naruto anything ever, yeah. what's what's different about that? So he's just, he doesn't go into VR. So, well, it, 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 so you've got Naruto and then you've got Baruto. Yeah. It's, you've got different characters. Right. It was just lame. It was like none of it matters because it's like... Uh, it, it's just all pretend. Well, from what I understood, half of it is and half of it isn't. And right. then also you revisit history, but it's missing out a load of really important battles. Oh, okay. It's just, it's trying to abridge something that's like a thousand episodes long. Right, okay. And it's trying to abridge it to, to make everyone happy. Yeah. And I think it's going to make no one happy. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? You, I don't think, you, well, you can never make everyone happy, no. but you can certainly make everyone unhappy, can't you? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know? exactly right. Yeah. It seems, I'll tell you what, it's not even the, like the story that's the main issue. It's the fact that the, the previous games kind of had the formula down pat not yeah. down pat but quite good you know the free roaming for me that worked I liked it I know mm. some people didn't but then it's kind of stripped out all of that uh, which again that could be good if you just made it really fluid between yeah. stories that were coherent you know and it was it was done well mm -hmm. but it isn't in my no. opinion it's not done very well now what I will say is the actual gameplay is still just I, I like the brawler gameplay here I think it's very fun um, once you've learnt the basics through those tutorials, definitely do the tutorials. When you say brawler, do you mean brawlers in like a beat em up, you know, moving through, or is it no, like one so of those three like D arena? In an arena, yeah. 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 So okay. you're, like, they very often do that with these, don't they? So you're in a three D arena. You can switch in other characters as well to help you. A bit like more combat, you know, press the button at the other oh, buttons, yeah, yeah. and they will like jump in and do a, little, team a few moves. Yeah. 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 Um, and then it's like timing based blocking and, and, and you've got a dodge move that will teleport you to the other side of them. Like the actual combat is fine, it's good and it runs well enough. I didn't have any crashes or anything like that. And look, I'm not a mega fan. Mm -hmm. I think if I was a mega fan, I'd be even more like, you know, I've read a few people's opinions where they're like, this is the worst thing ever, uh -huh. they've destroyed the series, but I don't buy it into that. I think there's still something here. Yeah, yeah. I just, especially for the very high price as well, I think it's like 60 quid, 50, 55, 60 quid, something right. like that. Yeah. And you can find the um, the Ultimate Ninja Storm trilogy collection wise, not actually seen them. What's the one more than the trilogy like? Quadrilogy? Something maybe? like that. Yeah. yeah, you've got the trilogy and you've got the other one. I think you can find both of those probably for about tenner, right. something, you know, and, and does this offer much more? Not really. Okay. Not really. So yeah, don't buy it until it's on sale would be my recommendation. I know this Fair isn't enough. a recommendations video, but no. it, yeah, as far as interesting gameplay, it's, it's actually stripping stuff out in my opinion, okay. which is a bit sad. Yeah, well, that's a shame, that's a shame. Um, my last one is one that I reviewed the other week, and that's uh, Super Mario RPG. Mm -hmm. So I played this all the way through to completion, which for an RPG these days is uh, almost unheard of, yeah. to be honest. But it's not a very long game. I'd say it's a bit longer than most people. The, the number I see shouted out quite a lot is 10 hours. Yeah. I'd say it's a little bit longer than that. Maybe closer to 11 and a half, 12 maybe. Uh -huh. um, 11 maybe, you know, it's quite 11. But 
it is a short game in terms of RPGs, but I think it's very succinct. I think it, it doesn't outstay its welcome. Yeah. I think it does everything that you would want it to do, and it ends at a logical point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't hold the length against it. It's, uh, it's of course, uh, a game that came out in 1996 yeah. uh, originally. It didn't come out over here in the UK or in Europe at all. I didn't know that. No, it's uh, RPGs of the time on the Super Nintendo rarely came out over here. Right. I think it was a market that was still quite new, mm -hmm. a market that Nintendo were a little wary, for want of a better word, yeah. of. They weren't quite sure of it yet. Uh, they worried about the difficulty, right. whether a Western audience would uh, enjoy it. Yeah. So they, a few of them, a few of them did make their way to North America, but uh, Europe missed out a lot of the time. Mm. And this was always a game I wanted to play. I remember seeing this in magazines back in the day and thinking, like, "Wow, look at this!" You know, yeah. never got a chance to play it. So it was lovely playing it, obviously, in this uh, this remade form. And I, I like the graphical style this time round. I think uh, the the 3D look looks lovely. Obviously, back in the day, it had like a rendered, you know, faux 3D yeah. style to it. It's just a very pleasant game to play, mm. you know. Did they change any gameplay mechanics? I mean, I don't... they've added a few. Right. Um, for example, I think the first one had that kind of action time into it where you can get extra hits or reduce damage by pressing a button. Okay. In battle, in, in turn-based battle. Yeah. But this time you can also do like uh, what would you call it? like splash damage? You know, where you damage everyone around them as well. Yeah. If you hit the button at the right time. Um, so they've added a few little bits like that. Um, you, they've also added an auto save feature, as Good. well as the you know traditional save um, station, which you call it, yeah. of the old game, which is nice. You know that's handy. Yeah, it's just a few little improvements from what I've seen. But mm. obviously, having not played it back in the day, I couldn't really uh, do a proper comparison. It's not a very difficult game. You know, I was playing it along. I don't. I didn't die once during the whole game. Now, I don't think it's an easy game. It's difficult, isn't it? You know, when you're, you're quite experienced at playing games, you've played a lot of RPGs oh, all the time. games, boy. Exactly right, yeah. You're like, is this too easy or am I just quite good at this style of game, you know? And I, I think it is more of the latter, but obviously if you are also someone that's experienced and you have no real affinity for Mario or, or yearning to play this game, it might be something to consider. Because mm. like I said, I, honestly, I don't, I don't think I even used an item through the whole game. That sounds like you in most games, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But generally, by the point of me not using them is that I get to the final boss and I'm like, Time to I've use got them. my stash, you know, I ain't, <laughs> I'm, I'm all right, mate. <laughs> You're in bother because I've got all the gear. But I didn't need it. Right. So yeah, perhaps a little little too easy as well if, if you're experienced, but just a lot of fun to play. Mm. And you know, a nice humor to it. Classic Nintendo, production values, charm, all that. Really, I would recommend this game. You know, even though I blitzed through it, I enjoyed blitzing through it. Okay. Really enjoyed it. You I'm know, wondering if it's a worthwhile present or if for a ten-year-old or. Yeah, I would say so. I, it's, it's probably a good introduction to the RPG uh, RPG genre. Mm. Not again. I'm, I'm not saying it's too easy and it's it's for kids or anything like that. But it has the humour. It has the charm. It has a nice eclectic mix of characters. They don't look generic, you know, in some RPGs every character looks quite similar. Obviously here you've got those wacky Mario characters. Yeah. You'll know them as well, some of them certainly, and it, it just helps you with that bit of recognition of who's who and what, what they can do and what their powers are. I'd say this is a very good game for for a newbie to the RPG, regardless of age, do you know what I mean? I think yeah. it's a good, uh, a good starting point. Brilliant. Lovely. Yeah, I might have to uh, check it out. Mm. All right then, so my last one is one, and uh, we got a friend, uh, I hope, I'm sure he doesn't mind me saying his name, Derek, who uh, works for PR Hound, isn't it? Mm. And he's been saying to me for, for a couple of weeks now, this Astibra revision, Astibra, Astlibra. Astlibra, yeah. And he's been saying to me now for a couple of weeks that this Astlibra revision game is, is the, uh, I was gonna say the dog's set, <laughs> <laughs> is very, very good. Yeah. And, we're obviously super busy, but I did say we'd, uh, I'd have a little go of it. I played it in the last week, and it's really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. There were a few things I wasn't sure of, like you sent some screenshots and things, and I looked at the visuals, and I can be a bit of a, you know, judge a book by its cover. Right, I wasn't yeah. quite sure. But it's funny, isn't it? Sometimes when you see something in motion, it can be, it can just work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in motion, this looks amazing. Now, what I didn't realise that it took the developer 14 years to make this. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 14 years. It's crazy, isn't it? It's like a different time, isn't it? <laughs> that is crazy, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. What would that have been? 19, 2009. 2009. Jeez. Yeah. So he's worked on it for 14 years, 
And then rather than rush it out, he then spent the last year like getting feedback and revising bits, which is like, I mean, that's a good chunk of your life, isn't that's it? That's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. That's yeah. a proper uh, project of passion, isn't it? Isn't it? it? A, like a massive labour of love. The mm. guy's called Kaizo, I think. Um, but yeah, so basically how it works is it's an old school side-scrolling RPG, uh, action RPG. Yep. And it starts out with you getting basically teleported to this unusual world. And you've got a companion who's a crow. Oh, right. Okay. right guess what the crow's called, because I did laugh out loud. Uh, I can't feel any crow puns at the minute. Go on, no, 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 no. The, the crow, it's not a pun, it's just a <laughs> funny name for oh, a cool. crow. What's his name? Karen. Karen the crow. <laughs> <laughs> she is Karen, I think. Yeah. Karen. I just laughed out loud. My daughter was like, what are you laughing at? I was like, the crow's called Karen. Karen is in like K-A-R-E-N, not like C-H-R-A-R-O-N. K-A-R-O-N. Oh, okay. All right. Karen. Sounds like Karen. I am Karen. That yeah, Karen yeah, does yeah. sound a lot more, doesn't it? I'm like, all right, Karen. <laughs> all right, love. How's Tracy? Yeah. <laughs> Give me love to... Oh, look at that beak. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we are in Essex, so, you know. <laughs> Just in case you wondered what happened there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it really does try and get that golden age of JRPGs. And weirdly, when it was initially conceived, it probably wasn't far off from the golden age of JRPGs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's taken that 14 years. It's uh, real-time combat. So you got, you've got your classic. And weirdly, when I'm playing things like Gothic, there's a lot of comparisons, like inventory management looks very similar. You know, mm. you, get that, you get those panes of squares come up and you can kind of move your items left and right you can put a weapon different weapon in each hand yeah um it's uh, so far it's just really really good like the storyline i think it's difficult well of course it's difficult to make an original feeling story these days especially in an rpg yeah, you know yeah. some of the stuff you just told us you know where you're playing a game and they're sending you off to go for chickens and all <laughs> of that that's so commonplace i know it is yeah here one of the first things you do is you you're like traipsing through the landscape and yet you, you almost feel like you've been because you, you kind of both wake up in this location like what on earth's going on here mm. it's like in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and it's got that it's got this weird feeling about it like like you're never going to get out of this place because you're walking and walking and walking then you keep collapsing and get taken back to the to the house and you just can't find anyone else right like there's nothing around needless to say obviously that would be really boring if it was the whole game yeah, <laughs> but the way it's done it really makes you feel isolated and it was just a nice way for a game to start. I mean, I'm not saying it's the first game that's kind of stuck you in the middle of nowhere on your own mm. with this weird crow called Karen. <laughs> well, that, that part might be the first, <laughs> to be honest. But it really set up the, the world uh, and did give you as well a really clear objective as to what you want to do, and I won't spoil that. Um, but yeah, and it's also got a, a few like macabre bits, like you, you get to this haunted, um, haunted area with this random guy. I mean, I'm assuming here that it's a, a Japanese developer but it has a few of those, um, you know, when you play a Japanese game and you know there are certain things that we won't fully understand, but they will. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, again, I don't want to say because it will spoil it. Right. But it has a few of those, but I like those. It creates a different flavor than a Western yeah. RPG, you know? And, and you, you were saying before in your Mario RPG review, they didn't know if these certain aspects would work for a Western audience. Yeah. I think there is a big Western audience that loves those traditional Japanese yeah. aspects, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you do have maybe more so these days so obviously if this started development so long yeah. ago possibly not but a lot of western rpgs do try and emulate that japanese style now yes. so it could yeah. be a western developer that it just could has, well be yeah. you know but judging that this was 14 15 years ago that it started perhaps not i don't yeah. i don't know but yeah rpgs are are certainly um obviously have grown in in stature in terms of being a, a staple of the gaming yeah you know, uh, environment these days to the point where you wouldn't even dream of not releasing it somewhere. Mm. But back then, they, back then, sorry, they were seen as a, a big gamble. Yeah. You know, I, I remember hearing, I don't know exactly the story, and I, you know, I may be paraphrasing and getting it a little bit wrong, but when Square came to Nintendo with the idea of Final Fantasy, yeah. uh, Shigeru Miyamoto was quite skeptical. Mm. And obviously, it went on to be a, a wild success, you know. Yeah, because very often it's so different to what we're used to, mm. and and that's appealing in in and of itself. So this one, obviously, I need to play it quite a bit more. I've only done a couple of hours in it so far. Arrived at, don't want to spoil it, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it, with yeah, RPGs? Yeah, RPGs, yeah. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking the combat. It's quite simplistic, single button push. Um, you get different moves that you can basically equip to your character's specials. Yeah. Like, like even down to things like a run. Like you can either choose to have the run like medallion thing or not. And 
yeah, it, it seems really good so far. It's 19 quid, which I think is for someone that spent 14 years on it, you know, and the mm. quality that you've got here, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, something totally different, really, for me. Nice, nice. There we go. That's it's funny, isn't it? From six games there, I think five of those were RPGs. Yeah. And that wasn't intentional. It just just happened to be that way this week. But yeah, six games that we've been playing. Please do let us know of any games that you've been playing. We say this every week, but it's uh, it is true. It's really nice to to see what you've been playing and, and whether there are any games we've not considered or not even heard of mm. in some cases. And for everyone else to obviously do the same. Lovely stuff. Uh, as we said at the start. There is that sale um, for those physicals from Strictly Limited. We'll pop all the details in the description. You can go check that out. And uh, save yourself a bit of money if you're buying physicals. You can use PlayAsia and our code. Or you can save some money over at switchup.gg to buy your digitals using code SWITCHUP. Lovely. A big thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support. And to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care. And until next time, happy gaming.